our next speaker, Dr. Iris Bisoli, and she's going to talk about stability studies on perovskite materials and devices using concentrated sunlight. Thank you very much, Iris. So I do thank um, the organizer for this very interesting conference, and um, I also thank my co-authors. There's plenty of them. We're one big happy family. Many of them are cost members. Some of them are here. Um, and actually, the introduction to my talk took place yesterday in Eugene's very interesting talk, um, who showed you this data already yesterday. This is where we are. This is our campus in Sedeboker in Israel. It's in the southern part of Israel, and it's located in the desert, which means that we have a lot of sunny days, but we also have high quality sun um, because we have very clear sky and we're located in, uh, away from industry or any pollution uh, source except for dust storms. But Let's skip that. Uh, um, yeah. <laughs> um, and the um, solar spectrum that we get is pretty close to the standard one. And so we actually make good use of the high quality sun that we have. However, um, um, in contrast to what Eugene showed yesterday, which were outdoor measurements, my talk is going to be um, focused on taking the sun and bringing it into the lab and using it inside the lab. Not only do we do that, but we also concentrate the sunlight when we bring it into the lab. This is uh, a description of one of the systems that we use. And it's actually pretty simple. There's a parabolic mirror that concentrates sunlight onto a flat, small mirror, which reflects it into an optical fiber. The optical fiber actually really goes through the wall physically into the lab, where we can sit in the air-conditioned lab and use natural and concentrated uh, natural sunlight to illuminate the solar cells that we want to test. To get um, homogeneous illumination, we use a kaleidoscope, which is shown in a picture here. And being inside the lab, we can use a thermal table to control the temperature and other measures as well, to control the sample measures. Um, so my talk is going to be split into two parts. In the first part, I'm going to show um, some um, tests that we made using concentrated sunlight for the stability of perovskite materials. And then on the second part, I'll show uh, the use of concentrated sunlight for testing the stability of cells and perovskite devices. Um, so without further ado, let's start. But before we do that, I just want to stress that the um, goal or the motivation that we have in the study is to use concentrated sunlight for accelerated studies of stability. The fact that we can use the same spectrum only increased multiplied several times means that I can accelerate degradation processes and through that I can screen different materials and different technologies and different phenomena rather quickly and really within a couple of days I can have an answer to the questions that I look at. So the first question that we looked at was the very famous metal ammonium lead halide composition and we wonder what's the effect of the halide itself on the um, stability of these materials. So we took MAPI, the very famous uh, and frequently discussed MAPI, and we exposed it to 100 suns. For not very long altogether, we exposed it through one hour, okay? And we measured the um, absorption spectra every 20 minutes. And what you see is what you really expect. The absorption of the perovskite between 780 to about 500 nanometers decreases with exposure time. That's not very surprising. To make sure this is not an effect of the temperature, because the sample temperature was somewhat elevated during the measurement, we repeated this measurement in the dark. So we heated the samples to elevated temperatures in the dark. And we actually saw the opposite. The um, absorption didn't degrade. It actually improved with heat treatment in the dark. So we could um, um, correlate the degradation with illumination. And this is not very surprising. There has been quite a few mechanisms and we all um, focus on the same result. There is photolysis at elevated temperatures of MAPI, and it decomposes into lead iodide and some organics, and this is well known, only we could show it within an hour. That's not too surprising. And then we moved on to the methyl ammonium lead bromide films. And we repeated the same kind of experiment, and we saw nothing. The uh, absorption spectrum of methyl ammonium lead bromide doesn't change with exposure time to 100 suns. To make sure that we're not being too delicate with the sample, we heated it up to the very same temperature, and again, you see the same result. We, in all cases, we back up our results with material characterization, 
uh, not only absorption measurements, but also XRD, uh, elemental composition uh, characterization, XPS and EDS and other methods. And, and you see nothing with this composition. And if you think about it, it makes sense. The bromine um, ion, anion is smaller and it has stronger bonds with lead. This is calculated and you can find it. It has stronger um, hydrogen bonds with the amine and the uh, crystal with the bromine is a bit more dense because it's a cubic structure rather than pectagonal in the iodine case. And so it would all make sense that it would be more photostable. So this was completed in a rather short time. And from that point on, we said, okay, why don't we take the best of both worlds? And we take the higher absorption of the iodine composition with the better stability of the bromine composition and put them together. So we looked into the stability of mixed halide compositions. We made quite a few of them. This is only part of them. And what you see here is not very promising. What you see is that the absorption spectrum or the absorption decreases with exposure time and it actually gets worse the more you mix the halides. So what you see here is a, the absorption degradation state, which is just a, a integration of the number of photons, the solar photons that are being absorbed, as a function of dose, which is the sunlight times uh, the time of exposure. And the best, or actually improving absorption, is noted for the bromine <laughs> composition. Um, you get virtually almost no degradation with the iodine composition, or very little uh, degradation, but you start mixing, you get worse and worse stability. To confirm that this correlates with regular operational conditions, we confirm, we com uh, compare the same measurements with one sun exposure and we roughly get the same um, observation. And um, we looked into the mechanism and what does it degrade for, but uh, it, what does it degrade into? But really the question was why? And we looked into several parameters and eventually we could correlate the crystallinity with the degradation. So what you see here is a blue line which corresponds to the crystal coherence length as deduced from the Scherer formula from XRD. Uh, the smaller it is, the better crystalline quality you have. And it does correlate very nicely with the degradation in absorption. So the red line is the degradation in absorption. The smaller it is, the less degradation you have. So these would be the two um, pure composition, so only iodine and only bromine, and these would be um, the intermediate ones. And what you see is that as you mix and mix the halides, you get smaller and smaller uh, coherence lengths, which means that the, your crystalline quality is going down. And as it does, it, it can be related or can be explained by a distortion of this uh, framework, which introduces strain into the crystal uh, structure, which would weaken the bonds and make it easier to decompose under illumination. Um, so this too was not that surprising. Um, and then we went on and for whatever reason the students decided to make films um, instead of through the two-step deposition method where you first deposit the lead iodide and then the methyl ammonium iodide to make them by one step. So the first thing that you do is that you check that they behave Similarly, and that's what the students did, they made these films, they encapsulated them, and they measured, they exposed them to uh, 100 suns and measured their absorption. And what you see is that both of them degrade. The uh, absorption spectrum is not exactly similar, but the degradation is quite significant on both of them. And they came over to show it to me, very happy, and I said, that's very nice, but we, if we ever want to publish that, the referees are going to say, but you need to illuminate through the substrate. Do not illuminate through the encapsulation. It doesn't make sense. So why don't you repeat it, show the same results, and we'll go on with our life. So they repeated the uh, experiments and illuminated it with 100 suns through the substrate. And much to our surprise, the results were not the same. So you saw the same degradation with the one-step deposition, but you didn't see much degradation or a lot less degradation with the two-step deposition when you illuminate it through the substrate rather than through the encapsulation. So then we figured out that probably the one step deposited film is homogeneous, but this one is not. And we set on to understand why. So the first thing you do, you go to the microscope and you look at what you have. And if you look very carefully, you'd see there's two layers in the two deposited um, film. They're not very clear. 
So you go on and you try other methods. And when we looked at X3D, using both um, rotating angle and grazing incidence angle, you would see a very clear difference in the ratio between the MAPI peak and the lead iodide peak. In the two-step depositor film, you have a large uh, lead iodide peak, which increases the further you go away from the surface. So this is the rotating angle, this is the grazing incidence angle. The more you look into the film or the strongest signal you get from the um, lower parts of the film, the more lead iodide you have, which is something you don't see in the one-step deposition. So this was already a hint of the inhomogeneity in these films and the reason for their different behavior. And then we started thinking, okay, but why? And when you look into the uh, absorption spectrum of uh, lead iodide, you can get a hint of that. Lead iodide filters UV light almost as well as a UV filter. And indeed, if you screen the uh, sample and uh, filter away the UV radiation, you get perfect stability in both cases. Um, so to summarize the part of the materials, bromine-based uh, methyl ammonium lead halide composition are more stable than the iodine ones. It's all about the chemistry. Solid solutions of mixed halide compositions are not as stable, probably because of the crystal distortion. And if you want better stability, you should filter UV. If you have some remnant lead iodide, it could serve for that purpose. Now I'm going to briefly show some results about cell stability under concentrated sunlight. And I have to know that these are very preliminary results on a limited number of cells. And I'm just showing this as a um, proof of concept and not as a final uh, work. So we took these cells. These came from whole center. They're pretty good cells. You saw that, their characterization yesterday. They have about 15 or 16% efficiency when you start with. And when you expose them to different sunlight concentrations, the more concentration, <laughs> the, the bigger is the degradation. Not too surprising, right? So what we asked ourselves is the following. First of all, can we relate degradation under concentrated sunlight to degradation under operational conditions, which is one sun? And secondly, which are the important factors in the degradation? If we understand what is more important, the flux, the photon flux, or the temperature, or maybe other uh, parameters, maybe we can say something about the degradation mechanisms of these cells. So the first thing that we did is to look at all these results summarized into the um, normalized efficiency as a function of dose. Dose, as I said before, is a multiplication of the concentration by the time of exposure. And what you see that up to 20 suns, they're more or less the same, which means that it doesn't matter whether you illuminate it with one sun or with 20 suns. As long as you keep the same dose, you can correlate the degradation state with each other, which means that if you want to do accelerated studies, you can do them up to 20 suns safely and correlate your results with one sun stability. However, the picture changes when you go above 20 suns to 30 suns, something changes. And to understand what changes, our first guess was the temperature. So we illuminated it with uh, 30 sun hours at different temperatures, and you don't see it change. So we figure out that the difference at 30 suns must be related to the photon flux or a combination of the photon flux and the temperature. The next parameter that we looked at is the effect of bias during um, stressing. And if this is what we saw before with open circuit, this is what you see when you uh, expose it to concentrated light and under short, uh, um, short circuit conditions. And what you see is that when you change the flux, you completely change the degradation. The situation where you say, OK, same dose, everything is similar as long as you are below 30 suns, this is not the case with short circuit, which means that the degradation mechanism must be very, very different. This is, uh, this, th this picture shows again and again with the different um, photovoltaic parameters. If we look at the VOC, JSC, and fill factor, you'd see that under open circuit stressing, they're more or less the same as long as you stay below 30 suns, but they're very different when you uh, stress under short circuit. 
Well, I'm short in time, so we'll skip that and go directly to the summary. So this is what we saw when we uh, studied photovoltaic materials. We could screen out different phenomena rather quickly and look at comparing different materials in different directions. Um, when we studied cell stability, we saw that concentrated sunlight is a valid accelerated testing as long as you stay uh, below 20 suns and if you stress under open circuit. However, when you go above 20 suns or you stress under short circuit, you see something completely different and you see a very strong effect of the photon flux, which is probably combined with the temperature effect, um, which means that the degradation mechanism at open circuit and short circuit must be very, very different and should be very should be further studied to understand them. I should thank my um, collaborator, uh, Eugene, and our group, who luckily does not spend most of the time on the beach, um, the funding sources, and I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Iris, very much, and thank you for the timing. <laughs> we have time for one question. Nobody? If there's no question, we can also talk to you during coffee break. Thank you very much again to the speaker.